Welcome to the Madison Builder Podcast. Today is Friday, October 2nd, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's October baseball games and look ahead to today and the weekend. Preview the NBA and WNBA Finals games for the weekend. College football will preview and predict those games. NFL Week 4 will go over last night's game. Look ahead to the weekend's games. Some COVID news I want to talk about. Mass Singer will recap Wednesday night's episode. And my Fab Five in both college football and the NFL, respectively, and my best bet. All right, we'll start with baseball. We had, I think, four games yesterday because one got rained out. The Braves defeat the Reds 5 0 to advance to the second round of two game sweep. Ian Anderson, the win. Luis Castillo, the loss. Bottom of the fifth. RBI double. Ronald Cooney Jr., 1 0. Braves. Bottom of the eighth. Two run shot. Marcelo Zuna, 3 0. And two run shot. Adam Duvall, 5 0. Ian Anderson, six innings, two hits, no runs, two walks, nine strikeouts. Followed by Will Smith. Then Chris Martin and Mark Melanson, who all pitched well. Luis Castillo, five and a third, six hits in a run, a walk, seven strikeouts. Then Lucas Sims, Rossi Iglesias, and Michael Lorenzen. Disappointing finish to the season for the Reds. Um, now it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Do they make more win-now moves to improve their offense? I think they have the pitching, but I think we overrated some of the guys. And Joey Votto, obviously, is the player on the decline. A's over the White Sox, 6-4. To um, win the best of three as they move on to take on the Houston Astros. Frankie Montas to win. Evan Marshall to loss. Liam Hendricks to save. Top of the second. White Sox off to a fast fart. Homer. Um, Luis Robert. 1 0 Sox. Top of the third. RBI single. Luis Robert. 2 0 Sox. RBI double. Nomar Mazzaro. 3 0 Sox. Bottom of the fourth. Two run shots. Sean Murphy to get the A's on the board. Bases of the walk. Mark Hanna. 3 3. Bases little walk, Matt Olson, 4-3 A's. Top of the fifth, RBI single, Nomar Mazzara, 4-4. Bottom of the fifth, two-run single, Chad Pinder, 6-4 A's, and that was your final. The White Sox had a lot of other chances in this game, but they failed to capitalize. Mike Fires, an inning in the third, five hits in a run, walk, two strikeouts. That is Mario Petit for an inning in the third, Frankie Montas for two. J.B. Wendelkin for one. Lou Trevino for two and a third. Jake Dykeman for um, one third. And Joaquin Soria for an inning. Then Liam Hendricks to close it out. Dane Dunning, two thirds of an inning. Two hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Then Garrett Crochet, two thirds of an inning and then got injured, which is unfortunate. Aaron Bummer with for an inning. Then Cody Huer for an inning and a third. Carlos Rodon couldn't even record an out. Matt Foster, a third of an inning. Evan Marshall, two innings. Jimmy Cordero, an inning. And Alex Colomb, an inning. Um, White Sox, um, disappointing series loss for sure. They lost to a team that I think um, was flawed heading into the postseason due to the loss of Matt Chapman. These are still good, but I don't think they're a World Series caliber team without Mike or Matt Chapman. If they had him... I would have considered them as a real threat to represent the American League in the World Series, but to their credit, a lot of other guys have stepped up in his absence. White Sox, um, I think that the manager could be in trouble here due to how poorly the team finished its season. Expectations were high. Um, They looked like they were going to win the division, and they just faltered. So... I think they have an interesting offseason ahead. Obviously, they have Michael Kopech coming back from Tommy John, so um, that's going to be a, a big deal next year. Padres over to Cardinals, 11-9 to force a game three. Mayo Pagan the win. Daniel Ponce on the loss. Trevor Rosenthal the save. This was a, a great game. Top of the first, RBI single. Yachty Molina, 1-0. Top of the second, RBI single. Harrison Bader, 2-0. Two run shot, Colton Long, 4 nothing. bottom of the fourth. Field of choice, Will Myers, 4-1. Four, 
Jake Cronenworth walks for two, top of the sixth. RBI double Dexter Fowler, 5-2. RBI ground out Colin Wong, 6-2. And this is where it gets the uh, crazy bottom of the sixth. Three-run shot, Fernando Tatis Jr., 6-5. Game-tying shot, Manny Machado, so they go back-to-back at 6-6. Bottom of the seventh. Laser home run by Will Myers to give the Padres a 7-6 lead. Then a two-run shot by Fernando Tatis Jr. to make it 9-6. Top of the eighth. Sack fly, Harrison Bader makes it 9-7. Another sack fly by Colton Wong makes it 9-8. Bottom of the eighth. Another home run by Will Myers makes it 11-8 Padres. Top of the ninth home run, Paul Goldschmidt made it 9-11. And that was... The game. Um, Zach Davies only went two innings, five hits, four runs, a walk, three strikeouts, followed by Pierce Johnson, Adrian Morjon for um, an inning and an inning and a third, respectively. Then Austin Adams, Matt Strom, Garrett Richards, a third of an inning. Adams went two thirds. Strom went two thirds. Emilio Pagan for an inning. Drew Pomerantz for an inning. Then Trevor Rosenthal for an inning. Adam Wainwright, three and a third, six hits, two runs, two walks, three strikeouts. Austin Gomber for an inning and a third. Then Ryan Helsley for a third. Genesis Cabrera for a third. Giovanni Galejos for two thirds. Daniel Ponce de Leon for an inning. Tyler Webb for two thirds of an inning. And Cody Whitley for a third of an inning. Dodgers over the Brewers, three nothing to sweep. The Brewers, um, Dodgers on to the next round to take on the winner of Cardinals Padres, which isn't going to be an easy task. I think the Dodgers are in for um, a challenge in the next round. Clayton Kershaw the win, Brandon Woodruff the loss, Brute Star, Greater Y'all with the save. Dodgers did their business in the bottom of the fifth. RBI single, Matt Barnes, 1 0, and two run double, Mookie Betts, 3 nothing. That's all they needed. Kershaw, 8 and 8 straights, and no one runs a walk, 13 strikeouts. A fantastic start in a big game for Clayton Kershaw. We know what the naysayers are going to say. Yeah, well, it was against the Brewers. They're horrible this year. Of course, they all the same. And they're right, in a way. What happens in the next round and the rounds to come for Kershaw is going to define his postseason. And... Brutes are greater. you all only win an inning. Then Brewers side, um, Brendan Woodruff, four, two-thirds, five hits, three runs, no walks, nine strikeouts. So he didn't pitch bad. Josh Hader went an inning in the third, and Adrian Hauser went two. Today's games, 2 o'clock ABC, Marlins-Cubs. Um, good game. Marlins going for the series win. Cubs, obviously, trying to force the game three for Saturday. Sixto Sanchez, you Darvish. Sixto Sanchez's playoff debut, you Darvish. If I'm not mistaken, this is his first playoff start as a Chicago Cub. So I don't think he started that wild card game in which they lost the Rockies. I think that was Cole Hamels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Cubs are ridiculous, minus 205. Marlins plus 178. Um. I'm sure the Cubs on the run line will be plus, and the Marlins on the run line will be a minus. And then the overrun, there will probably be like seven and a half. Um, if the overrun, there is anything less than seven, I'm taking the over. If not, then I'll consider Cubs' run line for the pick. I think the Cubs force a game three. I think Darvish will pitch well. Sixto Sanchez ended the season in a slump. So give me Darvish and the Cubs here. To win and force a game three. Seven o'clock ESPN. You got the Cardinals and the Padres in the decisive game three. Jack Flaherty. We don't know who's going for the Padres. It's not going to be Mike Clevenger or Danielson Lamette. Those are two big losses for the Padres. I took the Padres in three. But I'm going to whiff on that and take the Cardinals here. Jack Flaherty is the ace of the staff. If the Padres had to win the series, they were going to do it in the games where Jack Flaherty wasn't going to pitch. So I think they're in trouble here. So I think the Cardinals deserve to be favored in this game. Um, The line isn't up yet because San Diego hasn't announced the starter. Um, So if the Cardinals are favored, I'm taking them on the run line. If not, then 
Um, I'll look at the total, and I'd consider the over if it's anything more than, say, 8. So, um, although the over's gone, uh, has been it twice in the series, so I'm either going to consider cards run line or over in the game, similar to, uh, the Cubs and the Marlins. And then Saturday, if necessary, Marlins, Cubs, 330 ESPN2, um, In this game, it'll probably be... Oh, we have it. Pablo Lopez, John Lester. Ah, oh, Cubs. Um, I think the Cubs are going to win these next two games in advance. The Marlins have no experience. You got the two veterans going, and Darvish and Lester have been in a ton of big games in their lives. Lester thrives in big games, especially in Cubby Blue. So give me the Cubs here in Game 3 on Saturday to advance. Now we will do NBA Finals game numbers two and three. Um, the thing that's unfortunate here is that we do not have uh, Bam Adebayo and Goran Dragic for Miami. Those are two really extreme losses for the Heat. Um, so, if they're going to win this game in the series, they're probably going to have to win tonight. Jimmy Butler's going to have to put him on his back. And, like I said, they have a tough task ahead. Um, obviously, the final score is a little deceiving because... The Lakers were up by 32, dominating. And then the Heat just wound up coming back. And um, you know, making that score a little bit tinier, uh, respect, uh, more respectable. Um, With both guys healthy, I'd make the Lakers favored by four and a half. Um, Bam's worth two points, so that'd be six and a half. And Goran Dragic, I'd say he's worth a half point. So I'd make the Lakers a seven-point favorite in tonight's game. FanDuel has it at nine and a half, which is crazy. Bam and Dragic are probably worth more than that, though. Um, I hate the pick of um, taking the heat plus the nine and a half. I just think that's high, even though... Um, those two players are injured. Um, over under 216. I like the under as well. So for the game tonight, my pick, I hate it. I think the Lakers go up 2 0. But my pick for the game, I like under 216. I'm too scared to take the Heat getting the points. I think the Heat will cover. So two picks for you for the game. My main podcast play is going to be under 216. But. I also like plus nine and a half for the Miami Heat. And then Sunday's game is going to be at 7.30 on ABC. It only says Lakers by four and a half in this one. That's probably because they're assuming that the two guys are going to be back. Um, I'm going to say the Heat. I'm going to say maybe the two guys are back and then uh, the Heat. Um, wind up making this a 2-1 series. So my prediction is that this is a 2-1 series by the end of the weekend. And uh, the Lakers win tonight and the Heat win on Sunday if their two stars that are injured come back. Now I'm going to do the WNBA Finals. I'll make a pick for game 
number one between the Storm and the Aces, 7 o'clock ESPN 2. Um, I took the Storm in five in the series. Um, I think the Storm are going to come out smoking hot. Their big four, Brianna Stewart, Jewel Lloyd, Natasha Howard, and Sue Bird, I think all have hip chips on their shoulders. And they'll lead the Storm to a game one win. I think Aja Wilson, Danielle Robinson, and those girls. Oh, Angel McCautry as well, obviously. Will um, hang around. I think it will be a close game. So, give me Seattle. I'm going to say they win a competitive, low-scoring game with some defense in there as well. Now we'll do college football picks for the weekend. Um, going to be interesting, obviously. Um, we'll start with tonight. You got Campbell at Wake Forest. Wake's favorite by 32 and a half over under 63 and a half. Um, I'm taking Campbell in the points. I don't think Wake Forest is very good. I do think Wake Forest will obviously win the game, but line's too high. I'd make Wake Forest 21. So give me Campbell plus the 32 and a half against Wake as it went down a point from yesterday. Louisiana Tech and BYU. BYU's favored by 24 and a half over under 61 and a half. I am taking Louisiana Tech to cover that number. I absolutely love Louisiana Tech. BYU has looked awesome. But Louisiana Tech's not bad. Quite frankly, I only make BYU slim favorites. Like, I don't think that my number of one and a half is correct per se, but I certainly think I'm getting a ton of value on Louisiana Tech, just like I feel like I'm getting a lot of value on Campbell. So give me Louisiana Tech getting the 24 and a half against BYU. Not to win, obviously, but obviously to cover that humongous number. All right, Saturday, 12 o'clock, Arkansas State, Coastal Carolina. Arkansas State fair by 3.5, over under 65.5. I'm going to take the Red Wolves minus the 3.5. I project the Red Wolves to be favored by um, 9.5. So I'm getting 6 points of value. And, oh, by the way, it could drop the 3 as the value is on plus 3.5 with Coastal Carolina and minus 122. So give me minus 3.5 with Arkansas State in that one. Um, next up, Baylor, West Virginia. Baylor's favorite 2.5 over under 52.5. Um, I'm going to lay the 2.5 with Baylor. I don't feel good about it. A lot of people like West Virginia. This line was 3 now. It's down to 2.5. I make Baylor 5. Um, did not like what I saw from the Mountaineers offensively last week. Baylor, yeah, they played Kansas. I know everybody loves betting the Mountaineers as a home underdog. I could be wrong. Maybe the Mountaineers went out right, and I'm wrong here. But, um, I'm going to take Baylor minus the two and a half in this one. Um, East Carolina at Georgia State. East Carolina is getting two and a half over under 69 and a half. I'm going to take the dog with East Carolina here. Um, I project East Carolina getting a half. So Georgia State, I have favored by a half. So I feel like I'm getting two points of value here with East Carolina. The total is pretty high. It's 69 and a half. So give me the points with East Carolina. Mizzou and Tennessee. Tennessee's favored by 12 and a half over under 48 and a half. I'm going to take the points again with Missouri. I project Tennessee to be favored in this game by five and a half. So I'm going to take the points with um, Mizzou. NC State at Pitt. NC State is getting 14F over under 47F. I love NC State in the points, and I love the over too. Um, I think NC State can win outright. I really do. I'm getting 14 and a half. I project NC State to be a two-point favorite. Guess what? I'm going to double down. I think they went out right. 
They are over 5-1 to one on the money line, plus 520, which is crazy. So give me NC State plus the 14.5 against Pitt, and I think they win the game outright as well. Next up, you have South Carolina at Florida. Florida's giving 18.5 over under 57.5. I'm taking the Gamecocks plus 18.5. Obviously, you have the storyline that is um, the former Gators coach now coaching the Gamecocks. So, um, Will Muschamp, I think, is going to be motivated in this game. I project Florida in this game to be favored by only 8.5. So, I'm getting some value at South Carolina. I think Florida wins, but South Carolina covers. TCU, Texas. Texas is giving 12.5 over under 62.5. I'm taking Texas plus 12.5. I'm sorry, TCU plus 12.5. I like the over as well. Um... I project Texas only to be three-point favorites. I think this is a letdown spot potentially for the Longhorns after what was an emotional compromise win against the um, Texas Tech Red Raiders. So give me TCU plus the points. I do think Texas wins, though. Next up, the UTS Day at UAB. UAB is giving 19.5 over under 54.5. I am taking... UTSA in the 19 and a half. The line went down a point. Um, I project UAB minus 15. So I'm getting a little bit of value at UTSA. So I'm going to take the points with the Roadrunners. But I do expect UAB to win. North Florida at Liberty. Liberty's giving 30 and a half over under 63 and a half. I'm taking Liberty. I project Liberty to be 51 and a half. North Alabama is no good, so give me Liberty minus the 30 and a half. Abilene Christian Army at 130. Army's giving 30 and a half. We don't have a total. I'm going to lay it with Army. I project Army 41. So give me the minus 30 and a half with Army. 330, you have Memphis at SMU. Memphis is giving one and a half over under 73 and a half. I project Memphis as a half-point favorite. So the uh, line is too close, so I don't have a big edge. So instead, I'm going to take the over 73.5. I think this is a shootout. I'm going to say SMU wins, actually. I don't feel good about it, but the play here for the podcast, over 73.5 and and the juices slightly on the under. North Carolina Boston College and C is getting 14 and a half over under 54 and a half. I love Boston College getting the 14 and a half. I think this is a closer game than expected. I actually project BC as only a three point underdog. So give me Boston College getting all those points, although I do think the Tar Heels will win. Next up, um, you got Oklahoma State at Kansas. Um, I project OK State to be 15 and a half. Um, so, and I refuse to take Kansas too. I'm going to take the, oh God. Their defense is very improved. Kansas's defense sucks. I think there is some value on the over 54.5 and minus 106. So that's where I am going to go for this play. Um, although I, I do think there's a chance Kansas covers as well. Because I'm getting some value here. A touchdown value. So I think there's a chance that Kansas backdoors them. But podcast play is going to be the over. Because I think there's a chance Oklahoma State has a bounce-back performance offensively after struggling a little bit against West Virginia. South Florida and Cincinnati. Um, Cincinnati's favorite 21.5 over on their 45.5. 
Um, I project Cincinnati in this game to be 12 and a half, so I'm getting a lot of value with USF. I hate USF. Like, I hate playing them. I love the over 45 and a half. I think Cincinnati can do that by themselves. So I'm going to take the over 45 and a half as the podcast play here. Although I think South Florida can cover the big number as well. Texas A&M, Alabama. Bama's giving 17 and a half over under 52 and a half. I project Bama by 10. Um, I never like taking... um, Teams getting points at Tuscaloosa. and But I like another over here. I'm going to take the over in A&M Bama. 52.5. I think Kellen Mond, Mac Jones could be a shootout. I think this game's played into the 60s, so give me the over, although I, obviously I think Alabama wins. Texas Tech, Kansas State. Kansas State's giving 2.5 over under 62.5. I project K-State. To be giving one and a half. But the play here is the over 62 and a half. I think this is a shootout. I think this game could be played into the 70s. And I think that Kansas State will win. Charlotte and FAU. FAU is giving six and a half over under 60 and a half. I project FAU by 15. So I'm going to lay the six and a half here with Florida Atlantic. I think this is a layup. And I think that FAU wins by double digits. Also at 4 o'clock, you have Jacksonville State and Florida State. I um, project Florida State to be favored by 45. They're only favored by 26 and a half, so I'm laying the 26 and a half with the Seminoles. Ole Miss and Kentucky. Kentucky's giving 6 and a half over under 61 and a half. I project... Ole Miss to be a half point favor on the road, so I'm taking Ole Miss plus a six and a half, and I'm taking them plus one eighty six on the Monday night money line the win outright. So give me Ole Miss plus six and a half and plus one eighty six on the money line. Virginia Tech and Duke. Virginia Tech's laying twelve and a half over under fifty four and a half. Um, I project Va Tech. To be favored in this game by um, 16. So I'm going to lay the uh, the points here at Virginia Tech. It's 12 and a half. All right, next up you got at 5 o'clock Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee. Western's laying 7 and a half over under 53 and a half. I project... Western to be favored by three, so I'm taking Middle Tennessee in the seven and a half, and I think Western wins. Air Force and Navy at six o'clock. Navy's giving six and a half over under 46 and a half. I think that's an overreaction line because of the comeback. I'm taking Air Force plus a six and a half. I think Air Force wins outright two plus 225. Seven o'clock, Georgia Southern, Neil Monroe. Georgia Southern's giving 20 and a half over under 48 and a half. I project Josto to be favored by 11, so I'm taking Neil Monroe. And the 20 and a half, although Drosso, I think, will win. 7.30, Arkansas and Mississippi State. The Bulldogs are laying 17 and a half over under 68 and a half. I'm going to take the Razorbacks getting the points. I only project Mississippi State to be favored by five and a half. So give me um, Arkansas and the points, although I expect... Mississippi State to win. Auburn against Georgia. Georgia's giving 6.5 over under 44.5. I project Georgia by 4. I'm taking Auburn the points, but I think Georgia will win. And I like over 44.5 as well. Vandy and LSU. LSU's having 20.5 over under 50.5. I project LSU by 11. I'm going to take Vandy the points just to cover, not the win. Um, Iowa State and Oklahoma. Oklahoma's giving 7.5 over under 63.5. I love Iowa State getting the points, and I think they went out right. They're plus 235. 
on the money line. North Texas against Southern Miss. North Texas giving one and a half over under 72 and a half. I project North Texas by four. I'm laying the one and a half with North Texas. Tulsa UCF. UCF's giving 21 and a half over under 72 and a half. I project um, UCF 14. So I like Tulsa in the points, but I like the over better. So podcast plays going to be over 72 and a half. Although, I, obviously, I think UCF will win. And last but not least, Virginia Clemson at 8 o'clock. Clemson giving 28.5 over under 55.5. I'm going to take the over 55.5. I think this is a high-scoring game into the 60s or even the 70s. And I also like Virginia getting the 28.5 points to at least cover the spread. Now we'll move on to uh, the NFL. We'll try to be quick here because I have a couple other things to get to. Broncos over the Jets. 37-28, 37-28, and what was, I thought, a more entertaining game than expected. Denver's 1-3, Jets 0-4. Brett Reipkin, 19-31, 242 yards, two touchdowns and three picks. Sam Darnold, 23 of 42 at 230 yards with six carries, 84 yards, and a long 46-yard rushing touchdown. And now the question is, when do they fire Adam Gase? Not if they fire Adam Gase. And now the picks for the podcast for week number four. You got the Cardinals and the Panthers. Cardinals laying three over under 51 and a half. I'm laying the three with the Cardinals. Um, I project Cardinals six and a half. I think they win this game by a score of 26-20. I'm sorry, I project Arizona three and a half. So I'm getting um, a little value on the Cardinals. But the podcast play, I'm going to go under 51 and a half. I thought I had a bigger edge on the Cardinals, but I don't. I apologize, guys. Um, Baltimore Ravens, Washington football team. Ballers here by 14 over under 45 and a half. I'm going to hold my nose and pick the football team getting the 14. Um, No, they won't win. I just think that number's too big. Um, and I think that Lamar gets too much respect on the market. I think the Ravens are going to win 27-19. Although podcasts play Washington plus 14. Cleveland-Dallas. Dallas is getting 4.5 over under 56.5. Um, I'm going to take the Browns getting the points. Um, no, they won't win. But... I think it's a closer game than people expect. I project Dallas to win this game by a score of 31-27. Those numbers add up to 58. So I also like the over as well. The Colts and the Bears. Colts giving 2.5 over under 43. Give me the Bears plus 2.5. I think they win the game outright. Um, Nick Foles and now for uh, the... Uh, Horrible Mitch Trubisky. Bears plus 114 on the money line. So give me the Bears plus 2.5. Jacksonville, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's giving 3 over under 49.5. Um, I'm going to take the under here. Um, I think I'm getting value at Jacksonville plus the 3, but I like the under better. I think this is a low scoring game, although both of these offenses have potential. I don't feel good about it. I'm going to say the Bengals win 40, or I'm sorry, 24 23. Chargers, Bucks, Bucks are favored by 7 over under 43. I project the Bucks by 6. So I'm getting um, some value. My play for this is going to be the over in this game. Um, I'm surprised that the number is 43. I think both of these offenses can score. I project Bucks 27-20. Minnesota, Houston. Houston's giving 3.5 over under 53.5. Um, 
I'm going to take the Vikings to win this outright. I project them as a three-point favorite. I have 27-24 Vikes. And so I'm going to take Minnesota getting the three and a half. And they are plus, I want to say, one. Yeah, 152 on the money line. So give me Minnesota to win outright. As a three and a half point underdog. New Orleans and Detroit. Detroit's getting four and a half over under 54. I love the Lions getting the four and a half. Um, no, I don't think they'll win outright, but I think they'll cover that number. I'm going to say the Saints win by three. I'm going to say 33-30 New Orleans. And I also like over 54 as well. Seattle and Miami. Seattle's giving six over under 54 and a half. Um, I think that this will be a higher scoring game than people expect. I say Seattle wins 26 to 20. Oh, wait, so a lower scoring game than people expect. My play for this one's going to be under 54 and a half. Um, I think that Seattle's defense will step up. I won't be shocked if you say two in the game. I like the Dolphins getting six as well at home. Because Seattle's coming back east. Um, but my play for the, the show for this game will be under 54.5. 4 o'clock window now. Giants, Rams, Rams given 13 over under 48.5. I project the Rams by 6.5. Um, I hate this pick too. I'm taking the Giants plus the 13. I know I'm going to regret it. But just too many points. Everyone loves the Rams as a bounce-back candidate. I think they're the survivor pool pick this week, obviously, but um, the spread's too big. I'm going to say the Rams win 23-13. The Bills and the Raiders. Bills minus three over on their 52-and-a-half. I project the Bills to be five-point favorite, so I'm laying the three with Buffalo. I think they win 30-24. to It looks like it's probably going to go up to three-and-a-half as... It's juiced to minus 120. The Jim Nance, Tony Romo special. The Patriots and the Chiefs. Chiefs giving 6.5 over under 52.5. I project the Chiefs by 7. Um, I'm going to lay the 6.5 with the Chiefs. Um, I like that I'm getting under a touchdown here. Um, it's just tough to go against Mahomes at this point. So give me Chiefs minus 6.5. Sunday Night Football, Eagles 49ers. Um... Jimmy Garoppolo back, George Kittle back, potentially as well. So I have to make an adjustment on this line projection I have. I project San Fran now three and a half. Um, they're favored by seven. I hate this pick too, but I'm taking um, Philly getting the seven. Um, I think 49ers will win. And by the way, total 46. I also like the under. I think this is a low-scoring game. These two teams um, are good defensively. So um, I'm taking Philly in the 7 for the podcast play. 49ers will win, and I also like the under. And then we'll save Monday Night Football for Monday, obviously. Um... And speaking of the NFL, um, the Titans and the Steelers was a game we did not get to because obviously it was postponed due to COVID. They will not play in week four. Um, the league is targeting week seven for that game um, as that was the Titans' bye week originally. And they're going to move Steelers-Ravens to week eight. And... Um, they will, um, play that game, uh, in week seven, the one that got postponed. So there's a little news for you. And then Raven Steelers gets bumped to week eight, as both these teams will have their buys this week. And then... More COVID-related news. Um, last night around 2 a.m., um, it was announced that President Donald Trump and his wife, the First Lady, 
had tested positive for COVID-19, um, hoping that they're asymptomatic, the president and first lady Milena, um, and that they get well soon. Um, they're going to be quarantining and hopefully um, he's well for uh, the second debate against Joe Biden, which is in a couple weeks from now. Um, it's just sad that uh, the media and and uh, and um, just um, people in general are just mocking this because it's obviously Democrats that are mocking this. But um, you, sh- regardless where you stand politically, you should not be mocking somebody testing positive for COVID. I said this when James Dolan got tested positive for COVID when everyone and their brother just mocked him. And I didn't actually say that the same thing would happen if Trump was tested positive due to the the narratives around Donald Trump by the Democratic Party. And it's all Democrats that are mocking it. And it was all Democrats that, and obviously Nick and Ranger haters that were mocking James Dolan when he got tested positive as well. But like I said, hopefully they're asymptomatic and they get well soon and that um, he'll be ready to go for the debate in a couple weeks against Joe Biden, and which should be an interesting debate in a couple weeks. Now I want to talk Mass Singer really quickly from Wednesday night. Um, just going to breeze through it. Um, there was six characters that went crocodile, baby, alien, seahorse, whatchamacallit, serpent, and gremlin. Um, crocodile... Um, there were um, three heart balloons, um, an Italian flag, some Boston references. There's a lagoon in the raft, very chill guy. There was a rainbow, someone that always wanted to be loved. There was a fountain. There was a pineapple with a fish. The contestant performed It's My Life by Bon Jovi. My first impression was, wait a minute, is this the first time we're ever going to see somebody sing their own song? He sounded like Bon Jovi live. And then because of the hints and there's a boy van vibe as well, I went with Donnie Wahlberg of New Kids on the Block, and that's where Robin went as well. Um, this would be a big deal if it's him because it's the husband of Jenny McCarthy, who's a judge on the show. Ken Jeong, Jess John Heim, and Nicole um, Scherzinger went with Nick Lachey, which wasn't the worst guess in the world. Baby Alien hinted at being in a classroom, being stuck in a second gear. There's a Green Slime Guy cartoon in the uh, clue package as well. There was a New York City hint in there. Um, there was a horseshoe. There was a bell. There maybe is a Philadelphia reference. And there were roses. Um, Baby Alien performed Faith by George Michael. My first impression is that this sounded like Taylor Zakhar Perez, who plays Marco in The Kissing Booth 2. Um... Obviously, Marco has some singing scenes in the movie. Well, he's Marco in the movie. Taylor has singing scenes in the movie, The Kissing Booth 2. And Baby Alien's voice reminded me of his. Um, Jenny McCarthy went with Ralph Macchio. Nicole Scherzinger went with David Schwimmer. And Ken Jeong went with Freddie Perez Jr. The seahorse was awesome. Um... There's very, like, summery vibes. There are country vibes. There's a rainbow frog, which hinted at LGBTQ, possibly. There are two dogs, a duck. Um, She hinted at being a dauntless diva within. There's harness power, which I alluded to earlier with the country vibes. And there was an emotion ocean sign. She performed the only girl in the world. My first impression, yes, because she's like, la, 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 Britney Spears. But as she went going, I'm like, no. That is not Britney Spears' voice. But due to the Midwest country hints, I think it's a country singer. And I thought about Carrie Underwood. No, you wouldn't think that she would be somebody that do this. But there's a lot of people who are like, what? I can't believe that this person did this show. And that was the first country singer that came to my mind. Um, Robin went with the country singer as well. He went with B.B. Rexa who is an up-and-coming star in the country world. Jenny McCarthy went with Halsey. That would be unreal if Halsey was on this show. That would be huge for the mass Singer. And then the Cole Scherzinger went with 
Haley Steinfeld, who she guessed the lion to be in season one. The whatchamacallit, um, there's a Candyland hint early on, there's a rainbow, maybe LGBTQ, a sun, there's Dancing with the Stars hints, um, observing the spotlight, um, so they hint at being like a second fiddle, um, there are keys, there is surfing, he hints at being a shy person, and then there is a clock, which maybe can hint to a shot clock. There is a bear, which was Sarah Palin's bear mask, at least the head of it. A 4.0, a 12, a 61, a 2, 7, and 8, a triangle, like a triangle instrument, and then a record. And he performed I Wish by Ski Low, which was a rap. My first impression guess was Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors due to his personality and his body shape. But the more I thought about it and hints at being shy, I'm going to take a chance here and pick Kawhi Leonard. Nobody would think Kawhi would do this show. And hints about being a second fiddle, and I think he's referring to being the second fiddle as in the second fiddle in Los Angeles, the second fiddle star in Los Angeles to LeBron James. So that's who I thought about. Um, and I'm going to go with Kawhi Leonard. Nicole went with Swiss Beats. Ken Jung went with Damian Lillard. Robin Thicke went with Tyler, the creator. The Serpent hints about Pirates in the Caribbean a little bit in the earlier part of the clue package. There hints about a troublemaker. There's medicine. There are Serpent Cedars, so maybe this is a junior. Serpent was awesome. He performed I'm Gonna Be by the Proclaimers. He had a very sweet rendition of that song. My first impression guess was Usher. I personally think that this is a rapper that can flat out sing. And I'm going to go with Usher. Um, I think it would be huge if the mass Singer got Usher. Um, Jenny McCarthy went with John Legend. Um, Nicole went with Leslie Odom Jr., which wasn't bad. And Ken Jeong went with David Diggs. And then the Gremlin, I thought was the worst of the six. Hints about being a bachelor. There's a ref 2619. There are boxing gloves. There's a champagne glass with a skeleton on it. There is um, cooking clues. Hints about being an animal lover. He performed Stand By Me by Benny King. And he had a raspy old voice. So I thought about Dion. Robin had the same idea. He went with Jerry Lee Lewis. Jenny McCarthy originally went with Sylvester Stallone. And then switched to Mickey Rourke. And then Ken Jeong went with... Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then Gremlin's like, I'm hot. I'm taking this off. And then he breaks the rules. Nick Cannon's too late. He calls off the men in black. And they're too late. And he takes off the mask. And who is it? Mickey Rourke. So Jenny McCarthy was correct. So I hope they count that towards a correct guess for her in the uh, season standings for the year. Because obviously they didn't make their final guesses, which was unfair. So... I thought Gremlin was getting voted off anyway. He was easily the worst of the six. So, it's going to be fun. So, um, and I think this is a great five sum that's left. And I think that the winner could potentially come from this group. Or, obviously, the Sun can absolutely win as well. And last but not least, um... Fab Five for the weekend and best bet. Um, I'm going to start with the Fab Five. College football. Um, obviously, don't do Friday games for Fab Five for college football. Just Saturday and Sunday, respectively, in the two sports. Um, first Fab Five pick, NC State getting the uh, 14 and a half. I just think that Pitt's overvalued there. Boston College getting 14.5 against UNC. Um, TCU getting 12.5 against uh, Texas. FAU minus 6.5 against Charlotte. And Iowa State getting 7.5 against Oklahoma. And that's going to be my money line pick of the week, plus 235 as well. And then... 
The NFL Fab Five was harder to figure out. Um, I'm going to go... I know some of these are going to differ on the... Uh, on the FanDuel ringer contest because I'm going to take totals in this contest this week. Or not contest, but in my Fab Five as well. I'm going to hold my nose and take the Washington football team in the contest, but I'm not going to do it here. Um, here in the Fab Five, I'm taking the over in the Bucks chargers game. I'm going to take Minnesota getting the three and a half. Worst case scenario... Minnesota covers but loses just like last week. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Lions. I'm going to take them plus the four and a half in the Fab Five. And I'm going to take them in the contest as well. I'm going to take... Oof, this is hard. Um, I'm going to take the... Under in Seattle, Miami, 54 and a half. I just think that's a lower scoring game. And the last of the picks in the Fab Five. I am going to take. Oof. Boy, this is hard. Um. I'm going to hold my nose and take Washington. I hate it. I am, I'm going to regret it. But money line pick of the week. Oh, wait, I'm not taking. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm not taking uh, Washington in the 14. Never mind. I'm going to take the Bears plus the 2.5 is the last Fab Five pick. And then um, the money line pick of the week, I'm going to go with the Bears as well. And I'm going to consider in another play parlaying them and the Vikings together. But, again, the Fat Five for um, this uh, Bears 2.5, Vikings 3.5, Detroit 4.5, Seattle-Miami under 54.5, and, a half, and um, Tampa Chargers over 43.5. And, and my best bet of the day Brought to you by FanDuel. Louisiana Tech getting 24.5 against BYU. Um, I think BYU is overvalued. I went against them last week. Didn't work out. I'm going against them again here. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna take I'm gonna, um, take La Tech. I don't know if they'll win, but um, I don't think they'll win. But I'm going to take them for my best bet of the night. Um, that's it for the show today. One last thing before we go. Trump's asymptomatic, so that's good news. Um, Monday we'll be back recapping everything from the weekend. Best bet as well. And I hope you guys have a great weekend.